Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. This is Tiffany here. I wanted to do a trade demonstration video today. I'm going to try my best to keep this as brief as possible. I know some of my last trade demonstration videos have been running a little bit long. These are the two positions that I put on a couple weeks ago. And if you recall from the last video, when I put on the Alibaba position, it's the stock sort of immediately took a turn against me and it was in the money last week pretty low it got down to like 198 or something um well as you can see patience certainly does pay off and right now alibaba is trading around 216. it's not a huge gain but right now alibaba is trading just slightly profitable um this is what i would call more or less a scratch trade. I don't anticipate taking a lot of profit off of this one. I don't want to hold it until expiration because if you've been keeping up with the news, there's been some um, legislation or actions taken by Congress about delisting Chinese companies and requiring heightened auditing standards and the like. And is, there's just a little bit too much uncertainty surrounding Alibaba right now, despite whatever you might Think about them generally as a company and their accounting practices. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna try to take a slight profit, um, maybe maybe even a slight loss. We'll see. I, this will more or less just be giving back the credit that we collected, maybe one or two dollars over. Um, so in in options trading terms, this would be considered more or less a scratch. Um, no harm, no foul. Just something to do when you don't want to hold a trade much longer. Um, so we collected 91, $91. Uh, we'll just see what happens. I'm going to try to sell this back for 89. We're going to keep this in force for the day. And <laughs> if this trade does um, get filled, it would be a $2 profit. It would increase the buying power by 160.71. We'll see what happens. So BABA was filled at 89 cents and after accounting for fees, it is about a dollar loss. All right, so 59 cent loss, which is not a big deal. Um, this is just an indication of sometimes when trades go bad and you just sort of take it for what it's worth. Um, I'm not really worried about it. I'm not sad about it. It's just on to the next one and so i've been exploring the charts and trying to figure out what would be a good trade opportunity um implied volatility is in the overall market is a little bit lower than it has been it's it's starting to decrease um and a lot of the volatility in these stocks right now i don't i'm not that familiar with them and there's earnings coming up and i'm not ready to put on another earnings trade right now I don't think that would be beneficial or, or useful for this account. So I've been considering sort of trading in a very stable stock that we know and love called Apple and showing you what an iron condor looks like, which is a directionally neutral strategy that benefits from the passage of time. It assumes and or hopes that the stock will sort of stay within a trading range for the position that you put on. So I'm just gonna quickly show you Apple's chart. Before COVID, it was over 300. And it is certainly returned back to its pre-COVID status, which is good for Apple investors. I don't anticipate Apple to take any major swings upward or downward from now until July 10th, which is the expiration that I'm gonna select for this trade. I hope that it will, it will stay in the range, but if it doesn't, then there are methods that we can implement that will increase the credit collected so that if we needed to take a loss of some sort or have to close the position, it wouldn't be as painful. So let's just explore an iron plunder real quick. The June 19th expiration, that's 16 days away. That's too soon for my preference. So we're gonna go to July 10th, which is a weekly because they have multiple strike prices, unlike July 17th, which is only five, $5 increments. And again, small account, don't wanna do a $5 wide iron condor. So an iron condor is essentially selling a call credit spread and a put credit spread at the same time. So the setup is as follows. You sell one put at any given strike and you open a put at any given strike 
and then you sell a call at any given strike followed by buying a call at any given strike. So the widths of these wings are $2.50 wide, which means that the buying power would be equivalent for both of these. If you sold an iron condor that had differing wing widths, for example, this is a $5 wide wing here, this is a $2.50 wide ring here, then the buying power would be based on these wings. So we'll just keep these even so that it's just an even 250. So the credit collected would be 171, which is well over one third of the widths of the strikes. If you zoom in a little bit, you can see that the expected range for Apple from now until July 10th is anywhere from a little under 305 to 345. Um, I don't think that Apple will get up to 335 by then, but you never know. Apple's 52 week range shows that its high was 327.85 in January. So we'll just sort of see what happens there. This is a weekly, so the bids are a little bit wider, but Apple is a very liquid stock. So I am hopeful that this will get filled today. If you wanted to ensure a greater probability of success, you could widen. That's interesting, the wider you go. So look, if you sometimes if you widen in certain stocks, they will limit the strikes that are incremental um, the higher you go. So if we did this, we would collect 187, but then this would be a $5 wide um, iron condor, and I don't want to do that. So we'll go back down to 335. All right, so I am fairly confident that Apple will not go below 320. If it does increase, then what I would do is roll these strikes upwards as the stock continues to increase and then thereby collecting more credit. But I'm hopeful that it will just sort of trade within this range for the next couple of weeks and we'll see how it goes. All right, so if we put on this trade, it will consume $84.60 in buying power, collect $170 in credit, less fees. The max potential loss would be $80, which is a pretty decent trade. One other thing to note about iron condors before I hit the um, send button is that the ideal environment is high implied volatility. But as I said, volatility is kind of iffy here and there. and I am not as concerned about high IV in Apple because Apple is a very liquid stock. So it's better to have higher implied volatility, but it's not totally prohibitive in terms of an iron condor. If you want a stable stock that will trade within a range, you can um, go for volatility that's lower. So we'll see what happens. All right, so this is working. I want to trade for 170. Right now, the mid is 173. It's still going to fluctuate a little bit depending on the activity in July. It's um, a newer weekly that's come out in the last couple weeks. It's possible that it might take a little while for this one to get filled. There is some activity. There's not a ton. We'll just sort of see what happens. So this has been working for a little while and I'm going to make an adjustment to this trade to see if it gets filled. Instead of adjusting the credit collected, I'm going to adjust the strike prices. So 320, 317.50, 335, 337.50. This is slightly more credit collected, but as I said a few minutes ago, I don't think Apple is really going to sink below 320. Uh, the bid's slightly better, um, still fluctuating a little bit. I'm going to try to collect 175 and see what happens. And I'm doing this because looking at the options activity for July 10th, it looks like there's a little bit more activity in the 320 as opposed to 315, so I wanted to move it up a little bit. Checking July 2nd to see if that might be a better option. So a little bit more activity in July 2nd, it might be worth considering moving it a week earlier. 
but I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes and then um, decide what to do about that. All right, so it didn't take long. Apple got filled just a few minutes ago at 175 less fees, which is 460 So in total, the credit collected is $170.40. Go ahead and enter that in. So in total, the credit collected for this small account since uh, March 27th is $275.15. There are still two positions open, one in Apple, one in SPY. SPY is currently profitable as that's been on for a little bit longer. I will keep you updated with the Apple and the SPY position on my Instagram account. Please check it out at Tiffany Trades Options. If you have any questions, please do me a favor and drop them in the comments below or send me a DM or email. And as always, if you found value in this video, please do me a favor, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'd be really appreciative if you shared this video with anybody who you think would find it useful. And as always, I'm so glad that you're here, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.